from RTV6. And good evening, everyone. I'm Todd Connor. And I'm Melissa Mahadeo. Tonight, we start with that breaking news, an extremely disturbing crime involving a bail bondsman and two teens. He believed one of them robbed him less than a week before Christmas. RTV6's Ebony Monet is live outside of police headquarters right now with the new information just released from investigators. Ebony? Police also say they have Watkins on video disposing of much of this evidence. We will continue to follow this story closely and have posted the full charging documents on the RTV6 app. We'll also have live coverage of Watkins' first court appearance tomorrow on Good Morning Indiana and a full report on the news at noon. All right, we turn now to the forecast. Tonight we're staying dry, but the temperatures, they are dropping. Yeah, that means that we could have snow flurries by this time tomorrow. Storm Team 6 meteorologist Kyle Mounts showing you what you can expect for your morning commute. Kyle? We now turn to new developments in the travel nightmare for one group of Hoosiers. Right now, two travelers are trying to fly to Southern California ahead of Friday's Rose Bowl Parade, but they may not make it there to see their late family member be honored for her gift of organ donation. RTV6's Chance Walser has more on those plans that are now up in the air. Now, Rhonda says they, along with the Indiana Donor Network, are trying everything they can to find other travel arrangements. The two plan to give it until tomorrow afternoon before either flying west or driving home. And tonight, 2015 is going down in Indianapolis history as the deadliest year on record. With the gruesome murder of two teens reported tonight, 146 individuals have now been murdered in our city so far this year. The previous record was 143 killings back in 1998. Tonight, experts say while Indianapolis is breaking records, it's not alone following an uptick in murders in other big cities. And as police and the community leaders discuss ways to stop this trend. Marion County Sheriff John Layton is raising new concerns over a cutback in funding. Last week, the Department of Justice ended the civil forfeiture program, which allows local police to seize everything from cash to cars and even boats used in crimes. Tonight, Sheriff Layton tells us, quote, this is a classic example of cutting off your nose to spite your face. It's a needless destruction of a good program and an overreaction to the Department of Justice's pro problem. We are one city in Indianapolis and we need a united law enforcement effort, federal, state and local to defend our citizenry. He goes on to say he supports the National Sheriff's Association calling on Congress to increase funding and tools for local agencies. Also new tonight, as we get closer to that two month mark since Amanda Blackburn's death, her husband Davey is sharing his story with others. He returned to his church for a Christmas service explaining what it feels like to go through the holidays without his best friend. Sometimes I feel like that somebody's got my my head and and, and and they're just pushing it under water over and over and over and and I have no breath inside me. It just hurts so deeply. I have no I can't breathe underwater. And yet and yet for just a little season, maybe a couple days, maybe a couple hours, I get this breath. Like I feel this hope that maybe I'm gonna survive this only enough to catch my breath to go right back down. If you've experienced hurt, you know what I'm talking about. Davey Blackburn went on to say, despite this terrible loss, he's hopeful for the future and constantly surrounded by love with Amanda's family and their young son. TV6. We return now to that breaking news. An Indianapolis bail bondsman arrested tonight, accused of brutally murdering two teens reported missing on Christmas Eve. Right now, Kevin Watkins is behind bars in the Marion County Jail, facing charges in the deaths of 16-year-old Satori Dion Williams and 15-year-old Timmy Jackson. Now, according to court documents, investigators found blood, what appears to be brain matter, and even a fingertip found at Watkins house SUV and business now he's due in court tomorrow morning stay tuned to RTV 6 and our app for full coverage and the latest developments turning now to one of our top stories on Facebook tonight a Zinesville vet clinic asking for your help to save a dog who was left on an overpass and fell off the bridge this is Shelby the sweetheart now community pet health care says she was set free near a busy bridge on I 65 near Lebanon on Monday 
While cars avoided her, the dog got spooked and fell over the ledge, slamming hard into the ground. Tonight, Shelby is well enough to eat for the first time since that accident. But vets say she has a lot of internal injuries, and these next 24 hours are critical for her recovery. She was bleeding, and she was in a lot of pain, extreme pain. Um, she was kind of calm. She kind of understood that we were trying to help her. Um, we immediately wrapped her in some warm blankets, um, kind of cuddled her and held her so she would feel safe and that she wasn't going to, we were going to try to relieve her pain. Now, if you would like to donate to help her with her surgeries or you just want to share this story with friends and family, we've made it easy and posted it right in your Facebook news feed. I think it's a, a huge slap in the face to Eric Weddle, and it's embarrass embarrassing to him. He, he's a captain. He shouldn't be treated this way. All new at 11, fans outraged tonight over an NFL player fined for leaving the locker room to watch his daughter perform during a halftime show. Jeff Lasky from our script station in San Diego has more on how Chargers fans are stepping up for their captain.